Res is a unique title and one of my all-time favourite games. One of the main reasons why I was so entranced by it was due to its wireframe graphical presentation that immediately brought up memories of the movies Tron and the Lawnmower Man and how, as a younger gamer, I wanted nothing more than to be in these virtual worlds. It's clear to me that this game was designed with virtual reality in mind. You know, that that urge to delve deeper into the very code of video games itself, almost like the Matrix, and manipulate it through sight and touch. And I'm glad that this vision has now been achieved after all these years on the PlayStation VR. Anyway, I'm, you know, I'm not here to talk about my memories of this game. What I'm here to talk about is how I feel that this game fuses both music and game design into one, once again creating that wonderful synergy of game design and music that is so rare in this medium, but something I personally have a very deep connection to. Initially, you might think that picking a rhythm game is an obvious choice, but for me, calling this game a rhythm title is an unsuitable title. Res, for me, is not a rhythm title. I don't even, for the most part, class it as a shoot 'em up Res, I feel, is in a genre of its own, one that can only be described as an audio and visual simulation. This is an experience that wants to assault all your human senses. Your avatar, a digital construct of human evolution, flies through this digital matrix of human history, pulsates to the beat of the music as if it's the beating heart of the digital world itself and as if in response the world pulsates in unity with you, as if the world and the avatar are one and the same. It's in this rhythm, this music, that Res takes the player and transports them to a rave like euphoria, that sense of transcendence almost which is perfectly apt for this title, as that's the basis of the game is all about. Humanity reaching transcendence by pouring all their minds and thoughts into this one digital world called Eden. The beautiful thing about the music in this game is that although it plays in the background, subtly escalating, it's you as the player who adds the additional and completely necessary beats that truly transforms the overall composition. This is the moment of game design and music synergy. Without the player's input, the music in this game and the game itself would fall short for what it is, never reaching the same heights as it does with the player's input. What makes the player's input so integral and also elevates the game to gaming greatness is that it deceptively feels completely random. And I say deceptively, because each time you play this game, no matter what your skill level, the game has been coded and designed so that your input always falls in line with the core background composition. This is a wonderful illusion that many people might not have realised, and that's an achievement in itself. The developer maintaining the illusion of this video game, ensuring that the player's mind never questions or drifts out of the experience they are playing due to potential gameplay, technical limitations or design issues, something that is rarely achieved in this medium. The illusion that you can generate these inputs anytime you want, which makes the magic of this gameplay and music synergy even more mesmerising, is because the developers, United Games Artists, along with the producer and creator Tetsuya Mitsugushi, created a design mechanic called quantizing. The game was coded that the player's input, no matter when done, would always fall in line with the base composition so that the entirety of the music itself would never sound out of tune. I mean, what, what an incredible thing to achieve. You could, in a way, never trigger an action that would essentially add to the main composition, but when you do, no matter what the moment, it would fall in line with the beat. I find this incredible. 
The additional beats that accompany the main composition are generated by the player, locking onto enemies, destroying them, collecting items, using your power up, and locking onto the spheres that transport the player even deeper into the matrix that makes up this game world. Tetsuya Mitsuguchi wanted to create a clubbing like experience in this game through its music and he achieved this fantastically with the artists that helped create the music for this game. As the levels progress, the music escalates and escalates like, like a rave, engaging the player throughout the whole experience. By the time you reach the boss at the end of each level, the rave is in full effect and you're tapping your feet, nodding your head whilst getting utterly soaked up in the visual display of the game's dazzling presentation. At the same time, your controller vibrates with the beat, further dragging the player into this intoxicating experience that never gets boring due to what is essentially a, a sensory overload. As I said, Res, in my mind, is not a rhythm game. I've played many rhythm titles where you sing along to the music whilst tapping a few buttons, jump on a dance mat or swing your controller around. Res doesn't do this. Res places you into a Tron-like world where instead of the electrons and circuitry being people that live out their lives, the digital code in Res communicates through vibrations and musical beats, drawing the player deeper and deeper into its dazzling digital matrix, making sure that the player is evolved every step of the way.